hello children you have completed first chapter in physics name of that chapter is motion you learnt all the topics from your ncert book hope you have solved exercises from ncert book in text questions from ncert book and i told you through the youtube video lecture that you should solve ncert question and ncert exemplar problems you must know there are two books published by ncert for class 9 one is science and other is exemplar problems book so today i will be discussing the problems from ncert exemplar problems books so let us start with question number 1 you see in multiple choice questions question number 1 is a particle is moving in a circular path of radius r suppose there is a circular path this is a circular path its radius is r and a particle is moving along this circular path the displacement after half a circle would be the displacement after half a circle means you have to find the displacement of the particle whenever it travels along the circle equal to half the circumference so displacement whenever displacement words come what do you think you should think about the initial position of the particle and the final position of the particle let us suppose that the particle starts from this point p and it travels along this path and reach this position q you see this q is the diametrically opposite position this is half of the circle and this is another half of the circle what does it mean the particle must have reached from p to q to travel half the circle it means initial position is p and final position is q and you know the minimum distance from initial to final position is called displacement so this is diameter whatever is the length of the diameter that will be the displacement you know diameter is double the radius you have radius in the question so double the radius is the displacement that is displacement is 2r displacement is 2r now you have four options you see first option is 0 second option is pi r third option is 2r and fourth option is 2 pi r so what will be the answer third option that is 2r now see can the displacement be zero yes you know whenever the particle travels in such a way that it again stops at its final initial position that is initial and final position both are the same point then the displacement is zero so if the question is like that a particle starts from a point travels along the circular path and again reach the same point then displacement is zero means if particle travels from p to p along this circular path then displacement will be zero now see second option is pi r what can be this pi r you see 2 pi r is the circumference and pi r is half the circumference so this length is pi r this length and this is the length of the actual path traveled so this is called distance so in the given question displacement is 2r this is asked in the question but you can think what will be the distance distance traveled will be pi r is it clear and when the particle again reach point p means distance will be 2 pi r and displacement will be 0 have you got so in this question answer is 2r but we discussed all the four options what are the meaning of these four options so by that way you can understand 
द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ फिजिक्स मोर इजली सेकेंड क्वेश्चन इज अ बॉडी इज थ्रोन वर्टिकली अपवर्ड विथ वेलोसिटी यू द ग्रेटेस्ट हाइट एच टू विच इट विल राइज इज इन द लेक्चर रिलेटेड टू मोशन अंडर द इफेक्ट ऑफ ग्रेविटी आई टोल्ड यू यू लर्न दैट अ बॉडी कैन बी थ्रोन अपवर्ड्स ओनली इफ यू विल असाइन यू विल प्रोवाइड सम इनिशियल वेलोसिटी सो हियर इनिशियल वेलोसिटी इज यू विथ विच द बॉडी इज थ्रोन अपवर्ड्स यू ऑल्सो नो एट द मैक्सिमम हाइट इट्स वेलोसिटी विल बिकम जीरो सो वी विल बी जीरो एट द मैक्सिमम हाइट यू आर आस्क द मैक्सिमम हाइट अटेंड यू नो द फॉर्मूला वी स्क्वायर इज इक्वल टू यू स्क्वायर प्लस टू जी एच ही आर द बॉडी इज गोइंग अपवर्ड्स एंड एक्सीलेशन इज एक्टिंग डाउनवर्ड्स सो दिस जी विल बी पॉजिटिव और निगेटिव दिस जी विल बी निगेटिव एंड दिस प्लस साइन कैन बी रिप्लेसड बाय माइनस साइन हियर यू स्क्वायर माइनस टू जी एच नाउ दिस इज इक्वल टू वी स्क्वायर इज जीरो यू स्क्वायर माइनस टू जी एच फ्रॉम हियर यू कैन हैव टू जी एच इज इक्वल टू यू स्क्वायर सो एच इज इक्वल टू यू स्क्वायर बाई टू जी दिस इज द आंसर सी द ऑप्शन फर्स्ट ऑप्शन इज यू स्क्वायर बाई जी दिस इज रॉन्ग सेकेंड ऑप्शन इज यू स्क्वायर बाई टू जी दिस इज करेक्ट थर्ड इज यू स्क्वायर बाय जी दिस इज ऑल्सो रॉन्ग एंड फोर्थ इज यू बाय टू जी दिस इज ऑल्सो रॉन्ग सो हैव यू गॉट सेकेंड क्वेश्चन एच इज इक्वल टू यू स्क्वायर बाय टू जी नाउ लेट अस डिस्कस द थर्ड क्वेश्चन द न्यूमेरिकल रेडिसियो ऑफ डिस्प्लेसमेंट टू डिस्टेंस फॉर अ मूविंग ऑब्जेक्ट इज डिस्प्लेसमेंट टू डिस्टेंस मीन्स डिस्प्लेसमेंट बाय डिस्टेंस You already learnt displacement is less than distance. Displacement is less than distance. Displacement is less than or equal to distance. So displacement by distance. Displacement by distance will be. less than equal to 1 understand so option always less than 1 always equal to 1 always more than 1 equal or less than 1 means d is the right answer now question number 4 if the displacement of an object is proportional to a square of time then the object moves with fourth question is this if the displacement of an object is directly proportional to square of time see displacement s is proportional to t square what does it mean uniform then the object moves with uniform velocity uniform acceleration increasing acceleration decreasing acceleration you see s is proportional to t square so here you just have to recall the formula s is equal to ut plus half at square s is equal to ut plus half at square this is true if and only if a is constant so if u will be zero s will be equal to half at square if u is zero for u is equal to zero s is equal to half at square and from here you can say that s is proportional to t, t square which is possible if a is constant what does it mean it means it is representing uniformly accelerated motion so the answer will be b uniform acceleration you see this can be discussed in some other way also but that is not in the syllabus of class 9 we can differentiate s to get the nature of the motion but that will be discussed in class 11 that is for the class 11 so you don't don't think about that you just solve this question using this formula 
after that question number 5 from the given vt graph it can be inferred that the object is you see the vt graph is a straight line parallel to time axis there is a vt graph this is time and this is speed graph is this one vt graph is a straight line First option is in uniform motion at rest. Second option, third option in non-uniform motion. Fourth option moving with uniform acceleration. You already learned that if Vt graph is a straight line, means this V is constant. You see this value is constant. And this value is constant, Vt graph means V is constant. What does it mean? It means that it is uniform motion. So answer is A. What is the answer? Answer is C. Question number 6. Suppose a boy is enjoying a ride on a merry-go-round which is moving with a constant speed of 10 meter per second. It implies that the boy is at rest, moving with no acceleration, in accelerated motion, moving with uniform velocity. Merry-go-round means it is moving in Circular motion, it is in circular motion. So, boy on the merry-go-round is in circular motion. What does it mean? It means the motion is accelerated. Why? Because you learnt that whenever a body is in uniform circular motion, there is a centripetal acceleration. So, the boy is in accelerated motion. After then question number six is uh, seven is there area under a VT graph represents a physical quantity which has the unit you know area under the VT graph area under the VT graph represents which physical quantity you already learnt it is distance and unit of distance is meter so what will be the answer answer will be B meter after then question number eight in question number eight there is a diagram you see this is a diagram here is t here is s or x displacement this is for b this graph is for a this graph is for d and this graph is for c question is based on this graph Four cars A, B, C and D are moving on a level road. Level road means the motion is a straight line motion. Their distance versus time graphs are shown in figure. You have distance versus time graph. X represents distance and T represents time. Choose the correct statement. First statement is car A is faster than car D. You see car A is faster than car D means you have to compare the speed of two car a and d now you know slope of xt graph slope of distance time graph gives speed and slope re is related to angle so the graph the line representing the car having higher angle greater angle with x axis time axis will be moving with higher speed so you see car a is faster than car d car a its angle is this one this is the angle for car a and for car d this is the angle means slope for the dis distance time graph for the car d is greater than the slope for the distance time graph for the car a what does it mean speed of car d is greater than speed of car a but in option it is given car A is faster than car D. So this option is wrong. This is not correct. Second option car B is the slowest. You see this is car B. And slope for car B will be the smallest. Because its angle with time axis is the smallest one. So car B is the slowest. It is correct option. C option C car D is faster than car C. Car D is faster than car C. Again you see slope of D is less than slope of C. So car D will be slower than car C. Hence this option is wrong. And D option car C is the slowest. You see car C is the fastest because its slope is 
maximum so car c is the fastest hence what is the correct answer correct answer is b that is car b is the slowest after then question number 9 you have which of the following figures represents uniform motion of a moving object correctly you just look at your book in option a you have a distance time graph it is a straight line inclined with time axis and you know uniform motion means a straight line graph which represents a constant speed so a will be the option question number 10 slope of a velocity time graph gives you know slope of velocity time graph means displacement sorry slope of velocity time graph gives slope of velocity time graph gives acceleration and area enclosed by velocity time graph gives displacement is it correct okay after then question number 11 in which of the following cases of motion the distance moved and the magnitude of displacement are equal means what will be the case when distance moved and displacement are equal generally displacement is less than distance it can be equal to distance so you are asked that condition when displacement and distance are equal first option is if the car is moving on a straight road second if the car is moving in circular path third the pendulum is moving to and fro and the earth is revolving around the sun so first option will be the correct answer means if the car is moving on a straight road that is if a car will be moving along a straight line then distance and displacement can be equal okay so these were the multiple choice questions in ncert exemplar problems books in the next class we will be discussing about short answer type question and you should also try to solve the questions yourself thank you